Hello and welcome back. And that's right, I'm going to continue talking about some of the hardware solutions that were revealed to us from QNAP at their partner's day. They had a big open day for a bunch of people there around about Computex. Everyone's doing it, let's be honest. And they revealed a lovely little Thunderbolt solution. I've already done a couple of small vids and articles on this already. But at the moment, it's turning into one of the more exciting devices I've seen here because it's actually incredibly unique. This is, of course, the TBS 574 t X. This is a 5 bay ES1 NVMe NAS system with Thunderbolt 4 and 10 GBE connectivity. Now this thing is a beast and it is compact as all hell. It's not a silent NAS, it does have a couple of fans on it. I'm sure we've got some videos that I took when I was at the event there just showing some of the ports and connections of it. But straight away off the bat, for those that aren't aware, ES1 um, is a format of SSDs. And again, it goes into a different form factor entirely. But ultimately, it is answering the question and indeed answering the issue of M2 NVMEs and hot swapping. Now, this device has got five bays inside, each of which can be occupied with a PCIe M2 NVMe SSD. Now, each one of those goes inside a little caddy, and that is the ES1 injector. Now, each your system arrives with five of those, and it allows you to have a flash storage solution running on uh, M2 NVMEs each of which does actually support hot swapping, which is insane, particularly for if you've got a RAID issue that you've got to re, you know, you've got to reintroduce a drive into an existing array where you don't have downtime. That's one of the main benefits of drive media like this. But at the same time, the system is also arriving uh, with an Intel i3 or i5 12th gen processor there. You kind of need that for that Thunderbolt connectivity. Um, now these CPUs, fantastically powerful and capable there, integrated graphics, a great little clock speed and a decent little core number too. On top of that, the system is arriving with DDR4 memory, a decent amount of that as well. Unfortunately not ECC memory, I should add. That. Now it's the ports and connectivity that are going to get a lot of our attention. This is a unique little device and I think maybe you know, it might be leading quite heavily on this whole ES1 thing when I think they should be louder about the idea that you can just install any existing M2 NVMEs into this system but even moving slightly away from that the fact that it's got a couple of Thunderbolt 4 slots one on the front one on the back and 10 GBE off the bat makes it tremendously appealing for a lot of users out there I think and remember this is hugely compact I'm sure the videos I've got on screen are really making you know this a little clearer but it is very very small and it takes advantage of two rear fans as well as integrated cooling around the external chassis for heat dissipation too it's probably one of the most impressive flash servers of its scale in desktop form I have ever seen and it's the idea that it's kind of come out of left field as well which really really surprised a number of us Flash solutions we talked about a lot in 2023, and I don't think that's a subject that's going to go away. I'm not one of these people that's going to keep saying hard drives are dead, because personally I don't believe that. But I do think we're seeing a great deal more of affordability in M2 NVMe and just general flash solutions overall in the market. I'm not going to say this thing's cheap. It definitely isn't. And as a unique product, it's almost certainly going to carry a unique price tag there. But in terms of the hardware architecture, it's getting built on there. The port of connectivity you've got open to you and just the sheer gall of its uniqueness, you've really got to give it credit there. It's going to arrive with QTS or QUTS, whichever one you prefer. And of course, when is it going to arrive? How much is it going to be? Well, one, pricing. I could not get a solid number out of QNAP on that one. I'm sure someone will correct me, and if I do find out more, I'll update it below. I've already done a full article on this as well, which should be linked. In terms of availability, QNAP say they are aiming for Q3 of 2023. Now, I mentioned this in another video recently, but... QNAP kind of dropped the ball on a Thunderbolt 4 product back in early 2022 when they revealed the TS-464-T4 at CES 2022. That never arrived, and I do strongly believe it's never going to arrive. So as much as I want to believe this is going to come in September... I want to see, I want to physically hold the device before I can believe that because we've been looked down too many times by the Thunderbolt 4 stuff. I will say that I did physically see the solution. I will say I saw several Thunderbolt 4 solutions there and they did a, you know, a pretty convincing uh, presentation that they do intend to release this to market. But again, until I'm holding the device, I've been burnt before, and I'm sure you have as well. But that's really it. This is a very, very impressive system. It's got the HDMI and the USB 3.2 Gen 2, you would expect. Uh, and that CPU architecture does open the door to quite a decent amount of internal throughput. I don't think you're going to get 
out of this world performance over Thunderbolt like you would have DAS. We talked about this before. Thunderbolt over IP is just not as smooth and bulletproof as traditional Thunderbolt DAS when it's dealing with Array. So they did show some slides of Thunderbolt solutions and it looked like this was going to hit 1500. But again, whether that 1500 uh, up and down it was consistently based on a certain setup for the system. They did talk about the client device. I'm sure that's on screen. Um, but still, do factor in that we are still talking about a device here that they maxed out with five U2, uh, sorry, ES1 drives in there at 1500, which is arguably less than those drives are supposed to be capable of. But once you factor in Thunderbolt over NAS, which has always had something of a squeeze point versus DAS, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is just too weird a product? Or do you think this is the right kind of flash solution? Because we have talked about flash a lot recently. Let me know in the comments. Check out the full article link below in the description. And as mentioned in other videos, I'm going to be in Taipei for quite a few days now covering a lot of releases, both at uh, Copytex and brand partner events that are going to happen at the same time as this in this city because so many international travellers come here. So do stay tuned for more updates. But let me know what you guys think about this um, this up-and-coming Thunderbolt product. And I'm going to be revisiting QNAP stand at Computex. So hopefully your questions, I can get those answered uh, when I head over there. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more products over here at Computex. And I will see you next time.